All right, the, uh, the projector is already disconnected twice in the time since I tried to connect it, so I sense we're in for a long morning, again, on a short morning. We will begin with ref- reminding you of that word. What does, what does that word mean? Where have you seen that word before? Rational numbers. Excellent. What is a rational number? (laughs) Anybody. Give me something. Rational number. Anything. I'll take anything. Good start. Yeah, all right, so we're off and running. That's a rational number if two conditions are met. One, X and Y are integers. Now, of course, we know integers are negative infinity to positive infinity with no fractions or decimals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And condition two Y cannot equal zero. Because you can't divide by zero, it's impossible. So that's the rational part of what we're doing right now. What is an expression in math class? Jack? Oh, you had it. You had me until you said equal sign. Because once there's an equal sign, what is it? An equation. So an expression is basically math, I don't want to say expression, (laughs) math operations usually containing a variable. When we say expression, we almost always mean there's a variable. So x plus 2. No answer to that because you don't know what x is. Everybody cool? Okay, so logically then, what is a rational expression? That's, yeah, okay, yes. That's actually okay. Because x minus 6 is technically x minus 6 over 1, isn't it? All right. So talk to me more. Now that you've seen that x minus 6 is a rational expression, talk to me some more. Make me a better one. Okay. An expression that can be (laughs) in this form. All right. So an algebraic expression that is, and I'm going to use the word usually again, usually shown as a division of two polynomials. And we remember what a polynomial is. That's polynomial. That is an example of a polynomial, x plus 2, absolutely. Polynomial is an expression using constants, coefficients, and variables. All right. So if it's a division of two polynomials, x plus 6 over 2x minus 4. Everybody cool? Something over something. Now, there's still some rules here, right? We know that it has to work with that, right? So that tells me that whatever I put here for x, whatever I put here for x means this answer has to follow these rules. Is everybody with me? Cool? Okay. Now, a rational expression 
rational expression follows the rational number rules when or if we identify the variable. And that's what I just said, right? If we know what x is, when we sub it all in, it follows the rational rules. Everybody's okay with that? Yeah? Okay. Now, sometimes we have an expression that is not rational. And a not rational expression would be something like this. A variable exponent. That's not okay. Everybody cool? Yeah? We don't like that. Um, a radical exponent. A radical variable. We don't like that. Why? Why do you think? What would happen if I told you x equaled 5 here? Is the square root of 5 a rational number? So if the square root of x is anywhere in a rational expression and you can't get rid of it, is it a rational expression? No. Everybody cool? That's one thing, that's the other thing. And the third thing that makes it not rational is, and I'll change color, I'll go back to black. That's one, that's two. Any, I don't want to say X. Any variable value that gives a denominator of zero. Those are the three things that we will see in our studies. All right? So, a non-permissible value. Highlight that. I'm going to be abbreviating that as NPV because I'm lazy. A non-permissible value is... Any variable value that renders, oops, not an, renders a denominator of zero. If there's a number that you could sub in, and you would make your denominator zero, it is a non-permissible value. Now, sometimes, that should have been another color. Sometimes, it's a single value. Value, it's not a single values. And other times, it's a range. And when I say range, I don't mean like domain and range. I mean there's more than one. It's a range of values. Everybody cool? Now that's the new thing here. That's the new thing in this whole unit. So we're going to spend some time just working with that. So in this question right here, what... I'm not allowed to have zero where? In the denominator. Therefore, 4sr squared cannot equal what? Zero. And then we would just solve this. Okay? Divide by 4, divide by 4. sr squared cannot equal zero. r squared cannot equal zero, which means R cannot equal zero, and S K 
cannot equal zero. Basically, I'm finding the roots of the denominator. Everybody understand? Because if S is zero, four times zero times R, zero is on the bottom, not allowed. Right? If R is zero, R squared is zero, four times S times R is zero, not allowed. Everybody cool? And when have we seen this before? We've seen this in finding our roots, right? So in the second one, what's not allowed to be zero? X, 2X minus three can't be zero. How do we solve that? The same way we would solve it in last unit. We act, what we're actually doing is solving for the roots of the denominator. Everybody is with me? So in this case, x zero or 2x minus 3 equals 0. Well, x is 0 is easy. 2x equals 3. x equals 3 halves. If x is 0 or 3 halves, then this is going to be 0, right? So what does that mean are our non-permissible values here? What are the two values we aren't allowed to have on the bottom? 0 and three halves. Does everybody understand that? Last unit, we were trying to find the zeros because they were the roots of the parabolas, right? But now, I'm not allowed to have zeros. So I'm still trying to find the zeros, but I'm not allowed to have them. Is everybody cool? So up here, my NPV is zero and three halves. So that fits into the more than one value. Everybody all right? X can be any other number in the universe except zero and three halves. Good? Okay. What are we doing with C? In this unit, P squared minus P minus 12 can't equal zero. Right? So we take our knowledge from last unit p squared minus p minus 12 can equal zero. And those values will be our non-permissibles. Now, how would we solve this? How would we find the roots of that equation? What would we use? We have three choices. We could factor, we could quadratic formula, or we could com complete the square. What one are we going to use? In this case, factoring. Why, Sarah? Because it works. p minus 4, P plus 3 equals 0. So P equals 4 and negative 3. If we were in last unit. But we don't want that in this unit. So our NPVs equal 4 and negative 3. Everybody cool? You're just checking the denominators. Yeah? Nice. Nice. Let us move along then, cabbages, to page uh, 123. Simplifying a rational expression. When a rational expression is in simplest form, the numerator and, I don't know why I didn't write denominator there, and the denominator are both, please highlight, both completely simplified. That's step one. Then Just like in fractions, we, and I'm putting this in quotes, we reduce, because you're not really reducing, to lowest terms. Okay? So let's start first. If I were to solve this, if I had equals something, then 
my answer would be x equals blah, blah, blah. Agreed? Okay. But I don't have x equals something, so I'm not solving it. Because I'm not solving it, I have to make sure I take care of non-permissible values. Because when I do solve it, if one of the answers is a non-permissible value, can I include that in my answer? No, because it's non-permissible. So we have to check those first. First thing we check is always the MPV. 2x squared plus x minus 10 equals 0. This is factorable, right? Because 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. The factors of negative 20 that add to 1 are 5 and 4, yes? So it would be x plus 5 over 2 and x minus 4 over 2. Simplify 2x plus 5 and x minus 2, right? So what are my non-permissible values? Do I even need to go to this line or can I do my non-permissible values right there? I can do them right there, can't I? Because my non-permissive values are negative 5 halves and positive 2. Everybody cool? Right now, not incredibly important because we're not finding an actual answer. But if we were to work further with this, right? If we were to work further with this and we got x equals some answers and one of them was that or that, it wouldn't be okay. Everybody understand? All right, now, step one, the denominator, the numerator and the denominator are both completely simplified. So we'll start, I'll do the numerator in red. 3x minus 6. Can I simplify that anymore? How? I can take out a 3. Everybody cool? Everybody cool? Okay. The numerator I'll do in green. Right? We've already, fa we've already simplified that. We factored it right here, right? So that's the first step done. They're both simplified, yeah? Next step. Just like in fractions, we would reduce to lowest firm, lowest firms, lowest terms. So, if I gave you this, uh, 18 over 72, and I told you to reduce that, because it's not really reducing, what would you tell me the answer was? He waited patiently for his grade 11 class to simplify a fraction. Pardon me? Three twelfths? Which is one quarter. Agreed? Don't worry, you guys. That's okay. How... What math did you use to get from here to here? You divided both of them, yes? Everyone agree? Okay. Allow me to show you something that you already know. 18, right, is 2 times, times 3 times 3. Agreed? And 72 is 2 squared times 3 cubed. Agreed? Everyone with me? So that becomes 2 times 3 times 3 over 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Yes? What do I get to do right there? Cancel. What do I get to do right there? Cancel. What do I get to do with that 3 and that 3? Cancel. Everybody see what I'm doing? Anything on the top and anything on the bottom can be canceled, correct? So, what do I see right here? 
I see x minus 2 on the top, x minus 2 on the bottom. Connected by multiplication, not addition. So can I cancel them? Can I or can't I? Yes. Gone, gone. What is left? That is how I simplify a rational expression. Everybody cool? Notice I do not have an answer. I don't know what X is. All I've done is simplify. Is everybody good? Okay. Let's do the next one together. What do I got to do first? What's my NPV? T squared minus 1 equals 0. T squared equals 1. What is T equal? Plus or minus 1, right? Because I square root both sides. Everyone's good? That's step 1. I've got my non-permissible value. Then we're going to simplify anywhere we can. So we'll keep the numerator in red. 1 minus t. Does that get any simpler? No, absolutely not. Now let's do the green one. Can I simplify that? How? You all know how to simplify a difference of squares. t plus 1 and t minus 1. Agreed? Now, next step. Can I reduce that? Is there anything that's the same on the top and the bottom? Not quite. But what would happen if I took a negative 1 out of here? What would this red line become? Negative 1. And what would happen to that 1? It would become positive 1. And what would happen to that negative t? It would become positive t, wouldn't it? Over t plus 1, t minus 1. Now what do you see? Now I've got some canceling, right? So what's my final answer? Negative 1 over t minus 1. Please notice there is nothing new here at all, is there? Except this thing. And that's not really new, because we've already discussed times when you can't have an answer, haven't we? So what's going to happen here? What's the first thing we do? NPV which is y squared plus 3y minus 10 equals 0. Does that factor? Sure it does. y plus 5, y minus 2. So what are my NPVs? Negative 5 and positive 2. And once we do that, that also takes care of of simplifying this, doesn't it? y plus 5 and y minus 2. So what's the only thing left to do? Simplify the top. How do I simplify that? I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to work here. 2y squared plus y minus 10. Can I factor that? We've already factored it on this page. What is it? Five and four, and then we've already factored it on this page. We've already factored it on this page. 2y plus 5 and y minus 2. 2y plus 5 and y minus 2. What do you see? I lose that. I lose that. What else do you see? 
I lose that. I lose that. What's my final answer? Two. Ease peas, lemon squeezy. Now, what does this mean? That means if I run a Y value through there and it's not negative five or two, my answer will be two. Everybody understand? Let's check. What's two times one? Two plus one minus ten. What's that answer? Negative seven. Agreed? What's one? One plus three is? One plus three is? Minus ten? Wait a minute, what happened? No. Did I do it wrong? I ran one through there. Did I do it wrong? One squared is one times two is two. Plus one is three. Minus ten is... Three minus ten is... Negative seven. One plus... 3 is 4, right? 4 minus 10 is negative 6. So why didn't I get 2? Why did I get 2? What happens if we were to check it down here? 1 plus 5 would be what? 6. 1 minus 2 would be? Negative one, right? What's six times negative one? Negative six times two? Negative 12, right? One plus five is six times one minus two is negative one. So that would be negative six and it works just fine, right? Does everybody understand? Okay, so tell me why It didn't work up here when I put one all the way through it. Why did it work here and not there? I simplified wrong where? Because we all agree this one worked, right? And isn't this just this? So what did I do wrong? Should that bracket be there? This first bracket, should it be there? No. Now, why would I put that first bracket there? Not so much to mess with your brains, but a great many of you, when you are simplifying, will try to do that. Is that okay? No. So, when I showed you that, and we did that, why did I go back and check? Who never checks? You never check. So, 2y plus 5, y minus 2, over y plus 5, y minus 2. What is really the only thing I can cancel there? Right? So that's my answer. Now, 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 is 7. 1 plus 5 is 6. We got 7 over 6, right? And that's what we got up here. Everybody cool? You have to be careful where you put those brackets. Yes? What's our NPV here? Yeah, 3 and negative 3, right? So that's M plus 3, M minus 3. So it's 3 and negative 3, right? So what's our denominator? I hope all of you are noticing that 
every question I'm factoring, right? M plus 3, M minus 3. What do I do with the tot? What should I bring out of there? I've got positive M's on the bottom and I have negative M on the top. So what should I bring out? Negative 2. What's ne 6 divided by negative 2? Negative 3. What's negative 2M divided by negative 2? Positive M. Where can I cancel? There and there. Meaning my final answer... Again, not answer. My final simplification is negative 2 over m plus 3. Now, what does that mean? As long as I don't put in plus or minus 3, I'll get an answer, correct? So what's the easiest thing to put in there that isn't plus or minus 3? I could use one. What might even be easier? 0. 6 over negative 9 is negative 2 thirds, right? 2 over 0 plus 3 is 3, is negative 2 thirds. Are we right? Is it worth that one second check? Then you know you've cancelled correctly. Is everybody good? At the bottom of this page, at the bottom of this page, 1, factor, when, Always factor everything you can to be careful with brackets. Three, remember. Remember how to cancel y plus 5 over y minus 5. Can I do any canceling there? No. You people will try to cancel those 5s. No. Whole, you, whole binomials. Okay? That's not okay. Everybody with me? And step four. Check. Usually with zero. Then it's easy to check, right? Because you can sub zero into the original equation, you can sub zero into your simplified equation. Is everybody good? Last thing I'm going to do, and then you're going to do some work. Should I take these into here now? No. Why? Because it's difficult. So simplify first. Step one, factor everywhere we can. Can I factor this? Yes. Yeah, why? Because it's difference of squares, right? That's 4x plus 3y and 4x minus 3y. Agreed? Over. What's coming out of there? 2. What's staying in there? Any whole binomials to cancel? Where? Gone, gone. Right? So what is my simplified answer? Easy peasy, right? Now, where do these numbers go? Now they go in. And we can do that in our head even. 26 times 4 two is 104, right? So 2.6 times 4 is 10.4. Yeah? Times 4 
So I got 4 times 10.4 plus 3 times 12 is 36, yeah? So 3 times 1.2 is 3.6 over 2. We still cool? We still cool? We can work on our heads here, right? So 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 0.4 is 1.3, right? 4 times, it's not 1.3, what is it? 1.6. So 40 and 1.6, 41.6 plus 3.6 over 2, right? I already mul- Oh, dummy head. Thank you. Idiot head. Now, what do I do with the two? Ten point four divided by two is five point two. Three point six divided by two is one point eight. Five point two and one point eight is seven. All in our heads. Why do we do it that way? How would you do it? When you got to here, what would you do? No, 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 like at the end. Just add the top and add the divide by two. What? Just maybe add the... You could add the top and divide by two? Of course you could. But there's a reason I'm doing it that way. Why do you think it is? Okay, what if I gave you this? Y plus 6 over 2. That is technically what? Y over 2 plus 3. You guys simplify this poorly. You often try to cancel there, like I said earlier. So I want you to see that that 2 is supposed to go to both of them. Because this is technically 10.4 over 2 plus 3.6 over 2. That's why I do it. Because I want to avoid this. Because I guarantee you, even though I'm making this huge a deal of this, somebody on one of your assignments is going to get to here and tell me that it's y plus 3. And I'm going to ask you all right now, if you're that kid, do I have your permission to talk to you about it in front of everyone? I will not do that. But I may say, hey, remember back on April 16th when I said somebody would cancel that that way? Somebody did. And I will look at the whole class because I will blame you all. 17. I missed a day. All right. Your work. Has all the answers. Later on. When will this be due? You just keep saying days. You're going to get them all. What's happening tomorrow? We go over the open book exam, and it's a short day. It'll probably take most of the day, yes? If it doesn't, you'll have some time to work. What's happening Tuesday? Test. Test. So when is this due? Thursday. Wednesday. Now, let me offer you this. Would you rather have this due Tuesday... And write your test on Wednesday so you've been back for one day after your four-day weekend? This is due Tuesday then. Because this has a lot of stuff that will be helpful for your test anyway, right? And your quad final, which I remind you is closed book, And no calculator. 
is going to be Woden's day. I. I. And it's been recorded, and I'm going to write it on the board. Okay? And you have 14 more minutes of class for which you could use to either start this or study. Please notice the answers to these questions all live on page 127. So you can check your work. Hi. Hi.